Hi, welcome to the Audio Codes UK video tip series. This will be a series of videos giving technical information on how to use, install, deploy, integrate and configure Audio Codes products. I joined Audio Codes about six weeks ago, started looking through the products, working out best areas they could operate in, which market areas they were most suited for. And having understood that, I then went starting to speak to some of our resellers and partners. One or two of them said that they thought Audio Codes products were difficult to configure. So I thought I'd take a look at them and see exactly what they meant. So I installed our virtual SBC on my laptop and using the manual I tried to configure it. And it did, it did take me a couple of hours the first time through. So I thought there must be a better way. And then a colleague told me about our SBC wizard and he said you can install an SBC and configure it in less than a minute. I said wow, can't believe it. But he was right, so this is how you do it. So this is the scenario we've got here. Uh, a LAN with an IPPBX and some telephones. Then we have an audio codes gateway sitting in the middle with the LAN side interface to connect to the LAN of course and then another physical interface to connect to the DMZ and out to the internet edge firewall router. Then a SIP trunk through to the internet or a wide area network down to the ITSP and the ITSP of course links down to the PSTN so phone calls can be made out through there. So this is a typical configuration that most of our SPCs will be used in, with one interface on the LAN side and one on the WAN side. So the first thing to do is to connect into the SPC as it has a default IP address, and it needs to be set up to have a LAN side IP address so we can manage it. Now I'm running this SPC under Hyper-V on my laptop, so I'm going to open the Hyper-V manager and connect down to the console on the SPC by clicking on connect. This opens the, uh, the console, I can then access it by typing in the admin username and password. These are documented in the installation manuals. I then type enable to enter the uh, configuration side of the uh, configuration uh, and then put the password in again. And then I have to configure the uh, VoIP configuration. You can see that if I press tab on most of these keys, it fills out the rest of the command line, which helps you go through the navigation more easily. So I set up the interface that I'm going to configure, which is interface number zero. That's the primary LAN interface. And I set the IP address just by using the IP address command and typing in 10.1.10.75. That's the IP address of the LAN side. I then need to set the subnet mask. So that's prefix 24, uh, class C address. And then I exit out. And as I exit, this address will then be saved away and activated on the system. And then to save it permanently, I type write. So the IP address of the LAN side has now been set, so I can now manage the device um, successfully. OK, we've finished with the console, so now we open up the browser, navigate to 10.1.10.75, and use the username and password again, and we can log in and see the default configuration. So this is the new 7.2 user interface. I'll probably get shot for showing this, as it's not been released yet. Um, but you can see we've got a new graphical interface, um, which is much easier to use. Um, with the WAN side and the LAN side on the SPC and shown quite clearly. And then as you hover over them, you get tooltips that show you the various configuration elements. So this is a much nicer interface than the previous one and much easier to use. But we'll log out now and open up the uh, SPC wizard. So here's the SPC wizard. This is a standard Windows application. And this is the welcome screen that gives you the versions and the, all the information you need. So we'll click on Next and go to the opening screen. So in here, you can select the product you're going to configure. So you can see all the different audio codes SPCs. And we'll select the VE, the Virtual Edition. And we'll select firmware version 7.2. That's the version we're using. We then need to enter a customer name. So we'll just put Demo. You can obviously put in different information here. Now at this stage, you can actually connect directly to the device and pull the configuration of the device down into the configuration SPC wizard if you want to. So if you've got a pre-configured device, that helps. You can also load a file. So the configuration file is saved as text files. Um, so these can be loaded and saved inside the configuration tool. But we're starting from scratch, so we're going to click Next. Now this is the um, scenario screen. So you can see at the application side, you pick the application that you want to use. So you can have SIP trunks, you can have remote users, you can have various other configurations, but we're going to pick IPPBX with a SIP trunk. So select the IPPBX, 
And in the drop down, you can see a wide list of different IPPBXs that we've done interoperability testing with. So you can see different manufacturers, as well as Microsoft Link 2010, 2013, Skype for Business 2015, and all the other manufacturers that we've tested. So it's a very wide range of interoperability templates we have. But I'll just select generic in this case. And same for the SIP trunk. Again, you can drop down and select a wide range of different SIP trunking manufacturers um, from around the world. Um, so you can pick any one you like, basically, and it templates them appropriately with all the interop testing that we've been doing. Again, I'll just select generic SIP trunk. And then you can select the interface configuration. So we've got two ports, one port on the LAN and one port on the WAN. That gives you a physical separation between the LAN and the WAN, so it gives you maximum protection against intrusion. So the LAN port to the LAN side and the WAN port connects out to the internet. So in this screen, we can set the NTP server for setting the time correctly for CDRs, etc. But I don't have one on this LAN. But I will enable syslog, as this gives the ability to stream syslog messages for debug and tracing to a syslog server. And we'll cover that in a further tech tip, as it's very useful information can be gained from that. So this screen, we're setting up the LAN interface on the SBC. So this is the IP address of the interface that connects directly to the LAN. So that's 10.1.10.75 and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0, class C address. We'll also set the default gateway 10.1.10.1, um, and you can see we can also configure the OAM interface, the management interface, which we'll set to the LAN side, of course, to keep it secure. You can also set up things like VLAN tagging on here if you're running VLANs on your network, but in this case we're not. So I'm now setting up the WAN side interface. This is the IP interface that's in the DMZ, or DMZ for <laughs> European customers. Um, so it's 157.157.75, and again, put up a class C address on there. So this is the interface that's going to connect out. You can see if there's an error, um, for example, the default gateway is invalid for that LAN, it goes in red, and it won't let you go on. So you have to set a correct default gateway um, for that uh, IP address you configured. And you can then go on to the next screen. Again, I can set a public IP address. If I know the NAT address, I can set it, which helps the NAT traversal. So I'm now setting up the address for the IPPBX. So this is the IP address of the IPPBX that the, get the SPC is going to talk to. So that's 10.1.10.100. I can put a backup address as well. Also, if I check the uh, keep alive, it'll send a SIP options message to check that it's alive. Set UDP or TCP, and set the destination and listening SIP ports by default 5060, of course. I can also set the number of sessions that we will allow through this, in this case 100 sessions, and we'll start RTP off at port 6000. And again, I can set RTP or SRTP, so keep it secure. I'm now setting up the SIP trunk configuration. So this is the IP address of the SIP trunk provider, or the TSP, ITSP provider. So that's 157.157.100. Uh, and again, I can put a SIP domain, put SIP transport type if I need to and configure the other media and things. If I need to do a registration with this ITSP, um, then I can set the configuration information here, username and password, and move on. And almost at the end now, I'm just going to set up a couple of simple uh, number manipulations. You can set many more of these within the interface, but this lets you do it quite quickly in here. So my IPPX is using E164 numbering, so it sends numbers with a plus 44, plus etc. So I want to strip this and turn it um, back into a zero, because that's what my SIP trunk provider wants. So I'm going to strip three digits and add a zero. I'm going to do the same for the source number, the calling number. So again, it starts with a plus 44. I'm going to remove three digits and add a zero. So again, that's what my SIP trunk provider wants. I don't want to do inbound calls at the moment, so I'll just select next and move on. Again, no remote users enabled, so I'll just go straight on. And that's basically for me finish the configuration. You can see now they've got the configuration detailed to you. You can also take a, a sneak peek into the INI file, and this is the actual configuration file that gets pushed to the device, and it shows you exactly what it's like. This is a text file, so it can be just um, uh, read out and edited if you want to. So at this stage, we can save the text file to the machine, or we can load it directly to the device, which is what I'm going to do. So click on Load, connects to the device, and it sends the information down. So it's now pushed it down to the device, and it now resets the device because I've changed several IP addresses on the LAN interfaces. So we're now going to wait for a couple of minutes while it does that. OK, back again. It's now done the reset, so I can open up a web browser and browse to the system and connect in again and see exactly what it's done. So I'm logging into 10.1.10.75, 10 
and I can now see it's configured both sides of the SPC. You can see the LAN side um, with the LAN interfaces and uh, IP devices that were configured and then the WAN side connecting out to the uh, ITTSP. So it's all been set up and configured. You can also see the other screen such as the monitor screen that shows you the current information dashboard style of the SPC. So you can see the number of active calls, the uh, CDRs, call stats, ASR, etc. all displayed here. But let's test this setup. So what we're going to do is run two Windows machines that simulate the IPPBX and the ITSP. So on the left hand side I've got a machine running a SIP phone which simulates the IPPBX and on the right hand side another Windows machine again running a SIP phone that simulates the ITSP. I'm going to make a phone call from one through the SBC to the other one. So I type in the uh, telephone number I want to dial and the IP address of the LAN side of the SBC so that's 10.1.10.75 and make a call. And you can see the call immediately comes through to the phone on the other side. And you can see also the number's been transformed as we've stripped out the plus four four from the calling number. So that's the call active through the SPC. And that shows you just how quick and easy it is to set up. If we go back to the SPC um, uh, web server, web interface. Uh, oh, I just, uh, just realized I've opened the wrong web browser. So let's switch to the right web browser. Here it is. And we can see we've got an active call up through the SPC. Okay, and there it is. And if we bring in the um, the two Windows machines again that are simulating our IPPBX and ITSP, I can drop the call, and after the screen refresh, you can see the number of active calls drops to zero. I make the same call again, call connects, and after a few seconds, the screen refresh comes up, and the active call comes up again. So that's it. It's as easy as that to set up an audio code SPC using the SPC wizard. I hope you found this video tip useful. We'll be doing many more in the future. If you've got any ideas for anything you want to see, please let us know. Send us an email or a comment. We'll be glad to help. See you soon.